How's it going, everybody? DB Sports back with another video. Today we're breaking down Iowa State's season opener. They open it up at home against the Northern Iowa Panthers. I'm once again joined by my good friend, Matt. Matt, how you doing this evening? Good. Glad to be here. Awesome. Well, uh, nobody really likes starting the season with you and I, uh, especially coming off of a tumultuous offseason. Um but is there is there reason for hope this weekend? I would I would believe so. I mean, obviously we don't like playing this game because um, they just always give us fits of um, you know it's always a tough game. But I think that since um, coming into the season that uh, Iowa State you know is there's no expectations really. Right. I think that gives some leeway for the coaching staff, especially, um, you know, she'll has to, you know, uh, put a little magic on, uh, on the game, I guess, and try to do some, do some new things. Cause they have no idea what we're doing and some things that we can yeah. um, try in this game. But. So I guess kind of leading into that, I know, I know a lot of people when they watch Iowa state, that first game is always just a headache. Cause they, it, it never feels like we do anything. It just feels like you're super standard. You know, I, I hate to, I hate to use the phrase that we don't open the playbook, but that's kind of what it feels like every week one. Do you think with a new offensive coordinator, basically a completely new system, you got new quarterback, new starting running back, uh, new wide receiver one, you think they're going to maybe just kind of let it all hang out on Saturday and, and just see what happens? Yes and no. I think it depends on the tone that they set in the first half. Um, I feel like they'll probably, I mean, they will play conservative in this first half. Uh, no doubt, even if, um, you know, even if there's new things that they want to try, I think that they want to get, get a good footing in the game before they try anything, uh, anything funky. Right. Um, just kind of like with, um, uh, like, you know, look at the defense, um, how, Haycock usually clamps down after a while. He, right. he tries to see what, what they're doing. So I think Shulhas probably is going to try to get some looks on their defense and see where they're biting and whatnot, and then try to, uh, um, try to open things up. I would, I would assume I'm, I'm willing to bet we'll see a lot of, a lot of running in this game. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to be a major key. Um, and we can get into that further, but I think that will be um, probably one of the biggest things that we'll see is a lot of running. Right. Well, I guess we could we could kind of just start with the with the cyclone offense here. So the the depth chart was released uh, out on put out on Twitter. Uh, they haven't officially named a starting quarterback yet. So for the Adam Schefters of the world that have never seen it, uh, the, yeah. the 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 depth chart this year when they first put it out says Rocco Beck or JJ Cole. So they haven't fully announced i imagine that the expectation or not expectation i imagine that the uh, cumulative thought of cyclone nation is that rocco is going to start i don't think there are very many people that think matt is and and nate are just gonna throw a true freshman out there right away is that kind of where you're leaning yeah i'd be i'd be surprised if jj cole got the first snaps um i highly doubtful that would happen i think it's going to be rocco for probably the first quarter if the first quarter goes well um then they'll probably try out jj cole maybe it might be sooner depending on maybe different packages um, right. that they have but i think definitely the first two three series is definitely going to be rocco all the way down um so yeah um, i i kind of had a similar thought i guess um I guess my kind of thought was like if Rocco just comes out and the offense just absolutely stinks and it's like it's like three nothing you and I with like halfway to go in the second quarter, I feel like you just throw JJ out there at that point. Yeah. Not that I don't trust Rocco to be able to, you know, come back from a struggle, but it sounds like there's a lot of people that really like JJ, both inside and outside the program. So I feel like if you're kind of yeah, struggling yeah. early on and you're not really moving the ball, you know, you don't want to lose the UNI, obviously. But if you were going yeah. to throw JJ into the fire, you might as well do it if you're if you're struggling with Rocco. So I actually kind of like it. Normally, I'm not a fan of the, you know, whole quote unquote two quarterback system or quarterback by committee. Um, but I, I think we're in a good spot. Yeah, I, I think so, too. I um, 
you know, like I said, I think, um, I think unless, uh, unless Iowa State starts stalling out or um, maybe Rocco's throwing um, an interception or two here and there that he shouldn't be, I think that's when they're going to really throw JJ in there. But just I completely agree with what you're saying too. Yeah. Uh, and then we move to running back. So running back's maybe the most interesting position uh, for Iowa State. So once again, for the Adam Schefters of the world, uh, Iowa State has listed five running backs, and all of them have or next to their name. So there's Cartavius Norton, or Eli Sanders, or Abu Sama, or Carson Hansen, or Arlen Harris Jr. So yep. I get the feeling there's a chance we see all five of those guys on Saturday. What do you think? Yeah, I, I... I think I think so too. Um, however, I'm I have a feeling that it's probably going to be more so Norton and Sanders um, for a lot of downs. Okay. Um, probably for the probably for the first, just like with Rocco, it's probably going to be the first few series that they're going to be running Norton and Sanders. You'll probably have Norton do a lot of uh, um, a lot up the gut, um, kind of those. Um, power runs there and then Eli doing a lot of swings and whatnot uh yeah but I, I think we'll see all of them at some point it just depends on our situation I think yeah I like that um yeah I think I think running back's gonna you know obviously with you know losing Decker's quarterback is kind of the position everybody's focusing on but really the running back room is the one that I want to watch for pretty much this whole season um just oh, yeah, for sure I mean, you got you, like, I mean, like the depth chart says, you got five guys that that coaching staff believes could be the starter. So whether that's because yeah. they're all really good or because none of them are really standing out too much, you know, remains to be seen. But I, you know, can't have too many, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah, I I heard uh, some tidbits about so, um, Arlen Harris. Um, I know that he's listed further down on the depth chart there, but uh, essentially, like. He's uh, he's a for sure. Hey, we need three yards, guy. He's gonna get it, and um, all of them, uh, all of them on there. I've heard too that you know there's at least three draft picks on there. That's what uh, I, I heard from a sideline reporter um, and whatnot. Uh, but I think that there's probably not gonna be it's probably not gonna be a breakout game this game. But I right. think they'll probably, they'll probably somebody will make a name for themselves in this game for sure. I like it. Um, I'm, I'm going to kind of skip over tight end and wide receiver for now. We might come back to them a little bit later, but really, I think, you know, the other sort of position group that everybody's kind of watching is the offensive line. Now we've got ourselves a little revenge game with the yeah. offensive line coach. Uh, we, we stole him from Northern Iowa, the man, the myth, the legend. I, I think, I, I think I mentioned this last, last video, but I am the biggest offensive line stand uh for iowa state this year i am just i'm so happy to see it uh getting that good that good footing on the team um especially with having our heavy heavy hitters on there with yeah they're, what, they're all over 300 pounds you know yeah and, it's i think it was uh, i saw i think we brought up the tweet uh in the last video but we're like the third or fourth heaviest <laughs> offensive line um so yeah, I mean, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to it. There is still part of me though that's very like skeptical. Like I've heard in the past that like this is the year yeah. the offensive line is really good, and this is the year the offensive line is really good, yep. and this is the year the offense. And yeah. you know, it just seems like they're maybe okay at pass protecting, or they're maybe okay at run blocking, but they never really seem to throw it all together. So I really want this to be the year that that happens. I'm still just kind of skeptical about it. Um, we, we have the guys that yeah. have been here a long time, but I just want to see them do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, same here. Um, I, I, I take, uh, take, for example, I was listening to Chris Williams, and Brent Bloom, um, on their podcast and they were talking about this exactly. And that, uh, essentially Clanton went into this with an open mind and there's all these guys switched around, um, into positions that they, weren't before and right. you know evaluating them with an open mind and and i think that it's going to work out um going to work out in our favor 
Um, and uh, they also mentioned too that they said um, it was just a little tidbit, but it was um, with the weight and everything, there would be the eighth heaviest uh, offensive line in the NFL. Oh, jeez. Which is just, just nuts. So um, take that for what it's worth. I don't know, but we'll see. Um, we'll see. And uh, th- that same sideline reporter too that uh, I told you about that I, I heard, um, he he said that this first game, this is I'm just quoting what he said, but this first game we'll know exactly why Ryan Clanton is there. So I certainly I, hope so. I'm just hoping, man. I, <laughs> yeah. Um, kind of flipping <laughs> now to the UNI defense, we'll kind of just – pair it up here uh they lost benny sap he's in the nfl now i think he's actually on the packers practice squad uh i think he got signed to the packers practice squad yesterday um i mean they've they've got some guys on their defense uh including but not limited to former iowa state cyclone cordarius bailey uh yep they've also got i think they're, they're probably their best defender is woo governor uh, I don't know a whole yeah. lot about him, other than he's got a all college cool, football man. name. Uh, definitely oh, get yeah. that man on on that team. But uh, I mean, he had he had four picks last year, and he had two pick sixes in the same game. So uh, I'm guessing I don't know how UNI's defense is structured. If they go man or zone, or how they use their defensive backs, but sure I would imagine he'll have whoever's on the outside. I would assume that's going to be Higgins. I assume we'll keep mm-hmm. Jalen Nolan in the slot most of the time. Uh, yep. So I'd imagine he'll be lined up with Higgins quite frequently. So that'll be a that should be a fun matchup to watch. Mm-hmm. I think the one takeaway is, um, and you know, take it for what it's worth. Like I said, with the offensive line, but just looking up, just looking at their weight, essentially, um, Cordarius Bailey, uh, he's only listed at two forty three, whereas they're also, their other defensive lineman that is a transfer from Kansas State, um, 270. So, you got to think about those matchups as well. Um, yeah. Because you have guys at that at that point, say, averaging you know 250 and whatnot, they're 60 pounds heavier. And mass moves mass. Um, yeah. yeah. So, it's and it's going to be who's going to want it more at that and that uh, at the trenches. I think it's going to come down to that line play. Um, honestly, if uh, our offensive line can overtake their defensive line um, pretty handedly, then it's going to be a pretty easy game for Iowa State. But yeah. like I said, it just depends on who wants it more. Yeah, I I for sure agree with that. I really that that is definitely. I mean, I'm watching a lot. This is you know, it's kind of the you know, it's the first game. You, you're wanting to feel out what you're watching from an Iowa State fan perspective. So there's definitely a lot of fun stuff to watch. There's you know, the running back oh, battle, yeah. the, the battle in the trenches, you know, who's going to step up at wide receiver, which quarterbacks, gonna, you know, there's so much stuff to watch. Uh, also, what's going to mm-hmm. be fun to watch is I hear UNI's quarterback is supposedly this NFL caliber quarterback, uh, Theo Day. Now, again, I don't know a whole lot about him. I know UNI, they've got some guys that go to the NFL. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I hear this Th- Theo Day guy. Is, is catching some eyes and some ears of some people. Um, I think the he's the, definitely yeah. Go for it. Oh, as I say, he's definitely a good quarterback. Definitely a good right. Quarterback. I think I you know it sounds weird to say I really like Iowa State's matchup against him though because I feel like oh, yeah. I feel like our strong suit now. I know there's a lot of there's a lot of talk about the front seven. You know Tyler Onyedem and and mm-hmm. you know Dominic yep. Orange and them, but. I feel like Iowa State's strong suit is still definitely the secondary. You know, TJ Tampa and Miles Purchase on the outside, Bo Freeler and Malik Verdon back at safety. Um, and Theo Day, as, as good of a thrower of the ball as he is, which you know, let's give him credit, <laughs> he's, he's very talented uh, at throwing the football, he's not as much of a runner. And the thing that always scares me about other teams that we're playing against is if they have a mobile quarterback – I feel like they there's a lot of mobile quarterbacks that burn Iowa State. Now that's not to say he can't move, but I mean last year you look at it, his long was 11 yards. He had 223 yards, but he also lost 157. I'm guessing most of that's on sacks. So 
we'll see how that works out. But he, he nets 60, 66 yards on 70 carries. So I, I'm hoping that that's kind of the the mentality and that's kind of how it goes on Saturday is that he's not much of a mover. So, you know, we keep him in the pocket. We make him beat us with his arm. He's throwing at our secondary. I, I like our odds there. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. Um, I did watch. Uh, I did watch some games of him. I watched most notably their uh, South Dakota State game. That was a pretty good one. Um, it was a very good game. But he, he's a. He's a. I would say he's a mobile quarterback um, in and around the pocket. He's not going to bust past the line of scrimmage to bust off some yards, but he can be elusive behind the line of scrimmage. Right. From what I from what I saw at least. Um, but we'll see, you know, if, if John Haycox is like, okay, well, if you're going to be doing that and, you know, try to beat the secondary, our secondary, and I think our secondary is capable of doing that. Um, for sure. They're, they're wide receivers. Um, we can move on on to yeah. them if you want to. Yeah, let's go for it. Um, they're wide receivers. So I know that, um, Sam Schnee, I think that's how you pronounce it. I believe, it's not yeah. I believe so. Yes. Um, so he was one of their top receivers um, last year. I do believe yeah, so. Yeah, he he was tops in catches and yards. Um, yeah, Sergio Morancy had him beaten touchdowns, but yeah, Schnee Schnee was definitely the leading receiver as far as receptions and yards. From I don't know, I, from some of the, the games I watched, Schnee wasn't going. Um, way way downfield wasn't taking a top off the defense or anything yeah uh, a lot of um, you know in routes and whatnot um, so I think he's kind of a more of a corner threat than yeah anything. Uh, maybe an outside linebacker threat but he if if our linebacker I think it's gonna be a good test for our linebackers um, and I mean I, our, I know our corners will lock down on it but I think um, it'll be a real good test for our linebackers to see you know, how they can um, how they can handle him on the yeah. field. Uh, Schnee also, I believe, was the so I I looked up their top three because I I figured those were the guys we were going to be seeing the most of. It was Schnee, uh, Sergio Morancy, and Logan Wolf. Uh, Schnee was Schnee actually played against Iowa State in twenty twenty one. I believe he was a sophomore that year. He had three catches for thirty nine yards. So. Um, wasn't too impactful, but that game really wasn't impactful. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, uh, moving on from ever yeah. remembering that. Um, but yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know. I feel like UNI is not going to be able to run the ball too super well. I think based on their depth chart, they had, uh, two running backs that they thought would start. It was Ty Edwards, um, who started actually at Hutchinson Community College, which is where Kyle Kemp started. Uh, okay. But last year he played in three games uh, for UTSA, who was very good in the Conference USA. Um, mm -hmm. but, but Ty Edwards, I mean, he only played in three games. Uh, he had 14 carries for 44 yards. And then uh, Harrison Bay Bowie, I'm assuming that's how yep. that's pronounced, uh, he played in four games for UNI last year and had 27 carries for 115 yards. So they don't really have – they're not, like, bringing back their top guy. So I'm interested yeah. to see how our front seven kind of handles basically a new running back um, for UNI mm -hmm. and how they utilize whoever is going to start for them. So I feel like it's it's definitely strength on strength. I feel like it's our secondary against their passing game, at least on that side of the ball. Uh, is that – is that kind of where you line up? Yeah, I think so too. Um, they're probably going to try to um, chip away at what, um, or where we are, where we are lacking, and vice versa. Um, I think that they know that our secondary is going to be very, very good, um, and we're still yet to be battle tested for our, our rushing um, this year. Yeah. So. Um, I think they're going to try to, they're going to probably try to exploit that, but if we can lock it down, I, which I believe that we can, um, I think it's going to be a really, really tough game for them, but who knows? This game's always, this game's, um, El Asasio 2.0, <laughs> yep. um, essentially. Yep. so, um, we'll see, but I think, I think they'll be doing a lot more passing than anything and, yeah. um, yeah, it's going to probably be a long game for them if, if that's going to be the case. Yeah. 
So I guess just to kind of recap what everybody's thinking, uh, looking at you and I from last year, I know teams don't a hundred percent translate, but looking at you and I from last year compared to Iowa state from last year, uh, Iowa state, obviously four and eight was kind of a rough season lost. I believe six of those eight were one score games. Um, and then looking over at UNI, they went six and five last year. They went five and three in the Missouri Valley, which is certainly no, certainly not bad. No. Uh, they they were, I think yeah. they were like fifth in the Missouri Valley. It was just kind of a log jam in the middle. Um, yep. They did not make the FCS playoffs, which I think is probably a disappointment to UNI fans because I feel like normally they make it. Uh, you know, granted, I don't know that for sure. Um, but of those five losses, they lost to Air Force in the first week by, like, 50. They got absolutely smoked. Uh, they lost to Sacramento State, who was a two-seed in the FCS playoffs. They lost to uh, South Dakota State, who ended up winning the whole thing. Uh, and they lost to South Dakota State on a game-winning field goal uh, with no time yep. left. It was an untimed down. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. they, yep. they, they certainly had their own – you know, way of Iowa state losing football games. Um, so they're, I mean, yeah. they're, they're pretty much the Missouri Valley us. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. are we looking at, are we looking at sort of a, a grindier game? Are, are we thinking that Iowa state can, can pull away from them or what, what are we looking at here? I think, so I definitely think Iowa state is going to obviously win the game, but right. it's depending, it's dependent on by how much um, I'm, I think last time I said that they'd win by at least, you know, um, what, two, two scores. Um, but it, it depends on if a Iowa state's going to make a mistake, make mistakes. Um, and B if they can actually, um, well, let me go back, make mistakes as in like no turnovers. Yeah. Um, and then B this time actually gamble, don't lose in the margins like special teams. That's got to be – don't care if it's an FCF, FCS team. Yep. It's got to be, you know, it's got to be tightened up. Um, and their – like, for instance, their kicker, he um, – looking at his stats, that dude went um, – I think he made all extra points last year. I think he, he's, like, one yeah. of the best kickers in the – Yep. He, he made every so, extra point, uh, and he was 14 of 17 on kicks – uh, of those three misses, two of them were 40-plus. Uh, he was only one of three beyond 40. So uh, UNI is definitely getting the ball into the red zone. <laughs> and they're generally not missing kicks uh, when they get down there. So, um, like, like you said, it's definitely, you know, special teams. It feels like Iowa State fans are always hammering that, but that's definitely kind of one of the talking points is, is Iowa State finally going to figure out special teams? Because even against you and I, you have to execute there. Yep. Yep, that's true. It's just uh, – it's Iowa light, essentially. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, that's how they've always been, um, yep. especially with their coach, um, with Farley there for as long as he's been. Um, so I think uh, – one other thing that will come down to is um, it's going to be hot. Yeah. And I think what will really limit you and I now, I don't know. This is just could be a factor. But since they only have so many scholarship players, um, I don't know if that's me or not with my mic. Uh, oh. But anyways, since they, uh, since they only have so many scholarship players, I think that depth may or may not be an issue because if some of those guys get tired down, in the second half, then it's going to be, um, it's really going to be talent versus talent. Yeah. Yep. So that's going to be an art factor. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, so right here to close it out, we've both got Iowa state winning. I think we both have Iowa state winning fairly comfortably. I'll, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll go what, like 30 to 10. I feel like that's a pretty good, <laughs> I you know yeah, I I, I hate picking Iowa State by so much against UNI because this game does absolutely terrify me, but I I, I really feel like Matt Campbell's just going to kind of embrace the nothing to lose, so I'll yep. I'll go I'll go thirty to twenty, or thirty to ten sorry <laughs> Iowa State. Three ten that's yeah. yeah that's reasonable um I think 
Let's see here. I think I could do the math in my head. Um, you and I will definitely score. Uh, definitely score thirteen points. Okay. Um, they're gonna get. They're gonna get a touchdown at some point. I know that they are. It'll, it'll be a uh, kick return. Don't worry. Um. Yeah, it'll be something. <laughs> they'll break off something. Like, like, what the hell? So it'll be thirteen. Um, we'll say. Um, 24 13 so 24, 11 13. points that's um i think it's they probably get a garbage time touchdown um that that is and, very likely that i could totally see yeah. that happening iowa state's up like 24 yep. 7 with a minute left and you and i just scores for no reason i could totally exactly. i could totally see that happening all right well there you have yeah. it from us some predictions some some preview as to both what we can expect from northern iowa and iowa state let us know in the comments, what you think? Uh, I don't even know. I don't even know if there is a line for this game, but uh, you know, Iowa State. We if probably. If there is, it's gonna be. If there is, it's gonna uh, be yeah, it's yeah. I don't even. I don't even know. I I don't really touch the line. I just pick the winner. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah well... I heard. I heard it'll be like twelve or something on Saturday oh, okay. morning, maybe All right. something like that. I don't know. All right. Well, let us know in the comments what you think. I've got 30 to 10. Matt has 24 13. Let us know in the comments what you think. Excited to get the season underway. Matt, any final words before we kick off the season? Uh, well, not really, other than just roll clones. Roll clones, baby. All right. We'll see you next time. Peace out.